Good evening, everybody. Rob here with WesternPacificWeather.com. It is currently around 20 hundred Queensland time, and of course, we are watching severe tropical cyclone Yasi here, about 800 nautical miles to the east of Cairns right now. Uh, winds out of the system uh, sustained at 100 knots. That's based on the Dvorak scale out here, with some gusts even higher up to about 130 knots. So we're going to dive a little bit more into the development of the system, what's currently going on with it, and then we're going to get into the forecast track and the warnings here. So Please deal with me. It may be a long update today or this evening out of here. I know this is going to be one of the last updates before weather actually starts setting in by uh, tomorrow afternoon into evening here along the uh, Queensland coast. So, uh, first, I want to talk about the satellite imagery here showing you right now. This is a visible slash IR imagery. That's why Keanu flips back and forth here. Of course, you can't get that visual imagery at night, but you really can see where the system's headed and also the overall growth of it here. But the uh, main thing I want to note about this is the overall size size and sheer magnitude out of this system in comparison with the Queensland coast here. Uh, it basically extends all the way up here from uh, Papua New Guinea uh, as far south as Brisbane off the map here uh, from end to end of where this isobaric wraparound is on the system. And here showing you a visible, this visible imagery taken from uh, NASA actually today, just showing the overall structure of the system in very high uh, definition detail out of this. And uh, one thing I do want to know is that really well developed eye now in the center of this system and the overall eye wall really developing out of this. Now. So a very potent storm actually from the Bureau of Meteorology, and this was in their most recent technical discussion. Uh, word for word, Yasi is a large and powerful cyclone and poses a serious threat to North North Queensland community so uh, really don't take a joke out of the system just looking at the satellite picture you can really tell uh, that the system is exceptionally strong and uh, overall just very immense and once again I still like to use this microwave imagery because you can peer through these clouds once we get closer to the coast uh, radar imagery will substitute for this microwave imagery where you can see the heaviest amount of precipitation but for now since it's well over the water you can see this uh, very intense eye wall developing out of this it's actually really getting organized right now and also you have an outer eye wall looking like it's trying to form up here. Soon we will see that eye wall replacement cycle if it does continue to develop here, which in the forecast it does look like it will. So that will eventually weaken the storm, but then even make it stronger in the long run up towards about 120, possibly up to about 130 knots. But another thing I want to note in here is this banding coming out of the system. I know you see gaps on the side here. Well, that's because this imagery is taken from a polar orbiter, which uh, travels north and south throughout the uh, Earth here. So that's why you only get partial passes from time to time. But big thing to note out of this is this very well structured banding coming out of the system. This is a classic strong cyclone, uh, typhoon, hurricane, whatever you want to call it. This is what a classic example is going to look like here. Now here showing you the most recent uh, surface analysis from the Bureau of Meteorology, a severe tropical cyclone Yasi, 960 millibars. Bureau's uh, forecasting it to get down to about 939 millibars right now, so that's a very deep low, and it's going to be moving north of this area of high pressure, 1,022 millibars or HPA, whatever you want to call it here. And this storm is going to continue to run uh, north of that, basically towards lower pressure. I know I've said it on past uh, updates here it's always going to run a run downhill just like water towards that area of low pressure not towards the south towards that high pressure and eventually wrap around towards the south here over Queensland so you're going to start to see that southwestery trek uh, after it makes landfall and goes well inland basically the same way uh, tropical cyclone Anthony is actually this 1003 millibar rate in here is the uh, remnants of Anthony through there and here, just quickly showing you the model consensus, Vice uh, going through each individual model. I just want to show you where they all are matching up right now, and that is right around the Innisfail area and the uh, Cairns area, right in the middle of them. And that's really where this model consensus is kind of taking it, right through here, making landfall uh, overnight on the uh, second here. Or early morning, the third, however you want to look at here. But here's some of the bad news. We know we keep on saying low vertical wind shear, good exhaust aloft. Well, this is one of the charts that really kind of demonstrates that. The uh, wind differences between the surface and the upper level is about 5 to 10 knots out ahead of the storm all the way out to Queensland here. So that's kind of the bad news as far as the system gaining strength here. But the good news is that it is passing over a colder area of water right now here uh, showing the uh, surface temperatures through here. And you also can see some cooler temperatures extending out right in here, kind of a cold eddy 
about 75 degrees right through this region up towards about 80. Vice, the uh, hot pot, it was sitting out here just uh, about 24 to 48 hours ago, about 90 degrees. Now, once it moves over that, there is a potential for it to continue to develop, especially if it gets up in this area. It's not going to get up in there, but some of those outer rain bands get wrapped up in this area up in here above 85 degrees. That heat will start to boil back up again. But right now, though, with this sea surface temperature is slightly cooler. It's running over right now. It's kind of inhibiting development at this time. Uh, still seeing it gaining strength, but that rapid intensification where it was gaining about 25 to 30 knots every 12 hours doesn't look like that's going to continue to happen at least for the time being as it continues to run over this uh, lower sea surface temperatures out here. But like I said, that is for the time being. For example, here with the GTWC warning, this Joint Typhoon Warning Center out of Pearl Harbor, they only have it gaining up to about 15 knots throughout the day, all day today into tomorrow morning. Yet they have it maxing out at 125 gusts to 150 knots just prior to landfall as an encounter those possibly higher sea surface temperatures there. So uh, one thing I do want to know is this uh, track does put it just south of Cairns and just north of Innisfail. So that puts Innisfail in that left front quadrant and uh, not really good news for them as far as storm surge and those higher winds right in there. So one thing I do want to know is this inner circle right through here. That's what GTWC uses for 64 knots or greater or the uh, typhoon, cyclone, uh, hurricane, all those match up on that. And also this outer one is that 34 four knot or greater wind field coming out of this. I know uh, Bureau of Meteorology actually uses one similar here and I'll show that warning here uh, in just a second but another thing I want to note, JT does have this extending out farther inland all the way out into the fifth so uh, that rainfall and that overall wind field has the potential to go very far inland and actually the Bureau of Meteorology shows that as well with uh, all warnings uh, gale force watches actually all the way out towards Richmond here so it extends very far inland but you do have these cyclone warnings or gale warnings warnings here extending all the way up from Cape Melville down to Mackay here and with that central track extending through uh, Kansas and Innisfail here but one thing I also do want to note is that the Bureau extends that left front quadrant out farther here towards the south basically the uh, worst section of this storm here so that still puts Townsville in these uh, warning areas here as well but with that northerly extent here kind of takes them out of the uh, severe threat. Uh, I think the uh, max amount of threat for any of these towns out here definitely has to be Innisfail. I know they were were devastated by Larry just a few years back here but this doesn't look like it's going to be taking a, uh, a really optimum track for that town here as well. So of course if you live anywhere along the uh, coast of Innisfil here uh, or all the way down the Townsville definitely get away from the coast because the potential of storm surge is going to be very high right in that region. That doesn't take cans out of the uh, warning area as well. There's also a potential for the storm to churn right after it makes landfall here off towards the right that's due to friction that happens from time to time so this could put cans right right inside the uh, eye wall as it makes landfall if that does happen if it remains on this current track as well. I also do want to note you still have a cone of air extending out here from both sides so that really is kind of the all fail safe here that the uh, agencies put out where this uh, storm contracted either way right now. I know that the model consensus is pretty certain where it's going to be making landfall in this region but you still have that swing from both sides uh, still very possible. And I like this little diagram put together by one of the news agencies up there in Queensland here, uh, showing some comparison uh, with the other cyclones, even Hurricane Katrina out here. And uh, one thing I do want to note, Cyclone Yasi, uh, the size of this system, 500 kilometers wide, uh, much larger than Tracy. Tracy was one of those midget canes, we like to call them, or midget uh, cyclones here, only 50 kilometers wide, nonetheless very strong back in 1974 around the uh, Darwin area, caused a lot of destruction up there. And also you have Larry here, uh, just a few years back in 2006, that was only 100 kilometers wide, but uh, wind gusts were very high here, upwards about 300 kilometers, much lower expected for uh, here up in Yasi, uh, according to the Bureau, about 250 kilometers expected at max intensity. But the thing is, uh, Yasi much, much bigger than Larry was here, and that's going to increase the storm surge, 7 meters expected, vice 2.3. That's basically due to the fetch area from the winds uh, coming across. So, uh, if you look at the uh, overall wind field going basically due west, here. He starts all the way back here and extends farther out towards the west. Vice Larry, there was less of that overall traveling distance, thus the storm surge was much less at that time here. But I, I really like this diagram here. I'll be uh, posting it in the description box as well.
take a closer look at it. But this is another site I actually want to put out there as well. Uh, www.cycloneyassi at appspot.com or .yachtspot.com uh, has some really good storm surge charts here. Uh, some of the uh, maps here are in regards to uh, uh, storm surge as well of what's closed, evacuation areas and non such. So uh, really good site here for uh, community information as well. Just want to put that out there and also be putting it in the description box here. So I'm going to be summing it up here with this uh, Google Earth uh, image here. Basically the first thing I want to note first and foremost is you have the Queensland coast here and this is that wall that's basically coming at you guys right now uh, extending about 500 kilometers across on both sides and you're going to start seeing the uh, precipitation in this area especially around Queensland uh, here in uh, Cairns and Innisfail by tomorrow afternoon on Wednesday night you probably start seeing those first rain bands here. Uh, first and foremost thing I want to note with these rain bands right in here is that there is a possibility of a tornado threat out of those. That's typically with land falling cyclones, hurricanes, typhoons, all like once they make landfall there is that potential with these outer rain bands you have some of those higher thunder clouds in there and uh, some fast moving rain shrouded tornadoes within those if you're not uh, familiar with these they're uh, they usually move about the same speed as the overall cyclone rotation so you have about 30 to 40 knot uh, moving uh, cycle or um, tornadoes within these systems and on top of that they're always rain shrouded and they're very hard to see so that's the first and foremost thing I kind of want to point out a very dangerous threat with that as it makes landfall farther off here though once it starts to continue to make landfall you have those gale force warnings as already noted earlier on depending here all the way up in the north than all the way down towards uh, Mackay down in this region here. So, and lastly, I want to know and kind of summing it up is if it does make landfall where it's currently tracking, Innisfail will be seeing that higher storm surge right throughout this region here, uh, showing uh, possibly about six to seven meters after it makes landfall. That's all from the Bureau of Meteorology as well. I'm not trying to put out some false information there and try to scare anybody. This is going to be very intense storm surge uh, as this system makes landfall with the size of the storm being very, very large. But that is all I have. For for today everybody uh, thanks once again for listening i do want to note that i'm not an official source here if you don't want to see the official source uh, please check the bureau of meteorology uh they're putting out warnings every three hours so uh, please continue to check that for any continued updates and warnings here uh basically i'm just volunteering here kind of gathering the data i don't get paid for this as all at all so uh, just uh please know uh don't uh, take these words i'm saying out here for the uh, the gospel on this system as well so uh thank you though and if you have any questions comments or suggestions though on how i can these videos uh, any or any uh, better and more informative please let me know I know a lot of people are sharing some good links here as well so uh, just as long as you uh, post and continue to share and uh, everybody can continue to uh, get the best information out here along the uh, Queensland coast to make this overall situation uh, that much better even though it looks pretty grim at this time just trying to make it that much better for everybody out here so uh, thanks again and I hope everybody has a great day stay safe out there and that's all for today bye